So this is just one of the things that I have to deal with attempting to make YouTube videos in a functioning shop. We've got Nick. Yeah, I'm complaining. He's making a bunch of noise with an air gun doing something. And then of course, he says it's all work. I don't know if I believe him. And then of course, because you're doing that, the air compressor runs. So I'll wait, I'll, I'll start my little uh, stand up bit in a minute. So one of the projects that I've been putting off for way too long is this Jeep Wagoneer that's been in the shop. Customer brought it to us early on this summer for an LS swap. Uh, and we've made good progress like in August. We got a bunch of stuff knocked out, but uh, September 1, we had a bunch of changes going on um, on the business side of things, which took up pretty much all of our time. And unfortunately, we haven't been able to touch this uh, for a very long time. But anyway, um, last week I was able, or this week, I was able to get a few things knocked out, but I'll just give you guys a status update on this thing because um, I'm gonna be showing you a lot more of this because now that I have my ugly truck project out of my system for a little while, and before I start my next project truck, um, I wanna get this thing knocked out and there's actually another swap I have committed to after the fact. But anyway, we'll, uh, we're gonna be bouncing back and forth between uh, custom builds and my own stuff from here on out because that's the best I feel like the best use of my time. Anyway, um, yeah, so this is an 87 or an 89 Grand Wagoneer, I believe, um, or maybe not Grand. I, I don't know if the Grand is a trim package. Anyway, it's a Wagoneer. It's getting an LS swap. Uh, customer supplied the engine. It's a six liter LQ4, mildly warmed over, you know, cam and a few other tweaks here and there. Um, fairly simple power plant. Um, it's been installed underneath the hood for quite some time. Nick built some engine mounts down there. Um, it's got a 4L80 attached to it and then an Atlas attached to that. Uh, one of the things that I've been doing the last day or so is I built a throttle pedal bracket because this is going to drive by wire instead of cable. Um, so we got a, a GM like crate motor type pedal that's going to work with the Holly uh, Terminator X Max that's going to be controlling it. So got it mounted in the stock location on the firewall with a custom built bracket. I don't know you can it's probably too dark to see but we did that and then i've been messing around with the floor um it's got the atlas twin stick in it and this is in a slightly different spot and when they put the atlas in before they completely hacked the floorboard up so we rebuilt the little shift tower uh, where the boot's going to sit so now we've got the floor mat thing back in it's just going to have this little trim ring that you know sits right down around there and then there's a shift boot way over there that's going to just kind of cover that all up and make it tidy anyway um so on the inside other than mounting the ecu which is going to go up under the dash most of the work is done we have one of the fuel tanks out underneath because this is a, a dual tank setup We're running new stainless brake lines on the frame we did this hydro boost conversion uh, we built all the brake uh, or hydraulic lines for that i guess you could say We've got the accessory drive in place. The cooling system is like the radiator's mounted, but we need to get all the hoses built. Um, and oh, fuel system is done. We haven't shown you that yet, but more or less, this is kind of the status of the Wagoneer. And we'll be paying a lot more attention to these custom builds now that the summer is over. Anyway, um, my first project for the day, we get the wife's lander over in here. Um, I've got to get the cooling system refurbished because as you can see from this beautiful orange stalactite, or stalagmite, I'm not sure which one is which. Um, yeah, the cooling system leaks. There's a ton of these like little plastic fittings and connections everywhere, which uh, I don't know why they use them, but plastic will break down and fail. I had one T-fitting crack up on top of the throttle body. That was an easy uh, patch job that happened a month or two ago, but now it's time to actually take care of this once and for all. So I'm gonna start here. I'll breeze through, don't worry, I'm not gonna show you the whole thing, but um this right here is the assembly that leaks kind of like right down there so we grabbed all new land rover stuff and then basically every single hose in the cooling system that has a plastic fitting we're going to be replacing so uh let me get started So I gotta say, this is like my least favorite type of work to do on one of my own vehicles because 
I mean, normally I love high performance and modifications and loud exhausts and, you know, lifts and wheels. Like stuff that makes your vehicle more fun and enjoyable to drive or to look at. Where everything that we're doing right here is just, it's not only like maintenance, it's just replacing parts that shouldn't even have to break in the first place. So anyway, a um, couple hours later, we've got the teardown 100% complete. Um, we've got the intake off because there's a couple hoses that go underneath. We've got the heater hoses that run back to the file, firewall removed, the fan, the radiator. Uh, well, actually radiator's in, but the fan and shroud is out. Um, I've got the water pump removed, which I'm glad I did. I originally hadn't planned on doing a water pump, but I'm like, while I'm in there, we better do it. And then <laughs> check this out, guys. They actually use a plastic impeller, which it hasn't failed yet, and it might have lasted for a while longer, but the new one actually has a aluminum impeller, which to me, that is a much better design and it's going to be much longer lasting. So hopefully, uh, fingers crossed, this will be the last time we have to touch the cooling system on this vehicle uh, while we own it. So, um, yeah, I don't know if I mentioned all the new parts, but I probably have. I got all this, I forget, oh, I think it let, uh, yeah, I just can't talk today. Atlantic British, I think is where I got all this stuff from. So we got the coolant, crossover, thermostat housing, radiator neck sort of thing, and then pretty much every other hose that you see there on the ground. So um, we only really needed to replace this guy here. This is the one that was leaking. But like I mentioned earlier, one of these had already cracked and every single one of these plastic junctions or fittings there's probably about a dozen in here is just an opportunity for a failure to happen so yes the cooling system right now only needed that one but to me it doesn't make sense we got an older vehicle it's probably 15 years old now um, we already knew one of them had failed the rest will fail and rather than just piecemealing it one at a time i just wanted to knock it out so anyway uh, i'll get some cleanup work done and we'll get this all put back together you want to know the four most dangerous words a mechanic can say while you're in there You do them one, you might as well do them all. All right, so day two of the Land Rover project, we're making pretty good headway. Uh, we'll definitely have it back in running today. Um, just kind of taking care of some basic maintenance stuff. My philosophy has always been, you know, do it right as you can. And anytime you're involved in a project where you're taking something apart and you notice a, another unrelated part that needs to be replaced, just throw it in. Because if you want your vehicle to last and work as long as possible, like it just makes sense. In this case, um, the tensioner and idler pulleys, they were quite noisy so we just threw some new ones on the belts had been replaced fairly recently so i didn't have to touch the belts otherwise i probably would have thrown those on uh, but anyway yeah that's where we're at now i bet a lot of you guys do the same thing that i do but i cannot leave well enough alone when it comes to vehicles like this and i want to turn everything into a project and realistically long term this is just going to be a daily driver and i shouldn't touch it but I was on eBay last night just browsing around and wouldn't you know it, but you can pick up a supercharged 4.2 Range Rover engine pretty dang cheap. And these are all over the place. And uh, so this is a 4.4 liter V8. The supercharged ones were a 4.2. Apparently they had a smaller bore. Um, I've already kind of gone down the rabbit hole on this one. And I think it would be awesome to throw a supercharger on the Land Rover LR3. Realistically, it's probably never gonna happen. Like, I've, I've got so many other projects, um, and it would also be cool to like LS swap this thing or put a coyote in or just do something ridiculous whenever the wife gets done, you know, daily driving it. And that's kind of the reason why I like working on this thing because, you know, I did the lift, I did the wheels and the tires, and even though it's her car, for now, eventually I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna wanna get my hands on it and just do something ridiculous. But like I said, I know I, know I don't have time for projects right now, um, but 
the wheels are always turning. I, and I just, I can't shut that off. That's something, I don't know, that's just how my brain works. Anyway, uh, let me get this thing put back together and then hopefully we can get back on the uh, Wagoneer before the end of the day. All right, so skip in time just a little bit. We got the old Land Rover all done, all patched back up. Um, I do have the engine cover at the house. I could put that on. But now we have replaced all of those stupid plastic uh, breakable, uh, apparently 10 year shelf life uh, cooling fittings. So hopefully we should have no more problems in this cooling system for the foreseeable future. And if we do, then we'll just throw a big block or something stupid in there, I don't know. Um, but yeah, it, I know these Land Rovers definitely aren't everybody's cup of tea, especially the, you know, most guys who watch my channel and are like Chevys and, you know, Fords and whatever, American stuff, uh, which there's nothing wrong with that. I just, I kind of like these. So anyway, uh, that's what we got to do to keep it on the road. And I, I don't know, I almost, it's weird. I almost like having an older vehicle that's, I don't want to say problematic, but I almost like having an older vehicle that requires maintenance and upkeep because, I don't know, it gives me something to do. It, it, I just, I like it. That's all. Anyway, so, um, yeah, we've got the LR3 all done. I get a few errands to run, and hopefully we'll get back onto this guy. All right, guys, I got to admit, I kind of put off filming because it was Friday afternoon. We closed at like 1230 here at the shop. Everybody had gone home and I just had, I don't get this time a lot, but I had some time with the shop to myself, blast the radio, just cranking some tunes and getting some work knocked out on the old wagon here. So uh, definitely making a little bit of progress. Now, the bad thing is because we haven't really touched this thing in so long, um, I spent the last two days just kind of tidying up odds and ends that we started but never quite got around to finishing. Um, so I spent a lot of time underneath. I mentioned earlier the fuel tank was out. This is apparently some sort of a custom made tank. It's uh, fabricated from aluminum and whoever did it looks like they did a pretty decent job at it. Uh, but we pulled this out, the customer asked us to install a new sending unit. Um, I spent a lot of time just double checking and verifying wires because the customer had um, basically wired like from here back. Um, nothing terminated, of course, but anyway, I spent a bunch of time just kind of tidying that stuff up. We ran, you can see the brake lines here. We have all new stainless steel brake lines that we routed front to back. And of course, that's another reason why the tank had to be out. You probably can't see it, I've already shut all the lights off and stuff but anyway you can just imagine we've got some new stainless steel lines that run from there inside the frame rail up there that's where the tank sets right in there there's a view of the atlas 4l80 and the lq4 6 liter um, anyway yeah so we got most of those loose odds and ends tidied back up and really the next major uh, milestone that we need to accomplish on this build is getting the computer mounted he's running a holly terminator x max I think I want to put that basically on the inside of the firewall, right behind the engine. There's all the wiring for it. Um, of course, we're going to do our best to make this look neat and tidy and clean under the hood. Um, so yeah, there's quite a ways to go, but we also got quite a bit accomplished. So I'm happy. And like I said, just, you know, even though it's still work, it's nice to be able to just, you know, crank up the music, turn some wrenches, and that's like my zen, right? Is one at the racetrack and two here at the shop, turning wrenches, listening to tunes. So anyway, yeah, it was a good week. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. Um, come back soon. We'll be, oh, I think next time I'm going to be kicking off my brand new project, the one where I've been teasing you about all those cool all-wheel drive parts back there. So uh, yeah, we'll start that next time. Thank you guys. Come back soon.